So good morning, everybody. My name is Sindhu Gangadharan, and I head up the topic of integration in the office of the CTO. And I also head up the pr program for the Intelligent Enterprise. Happy to be here talking to you about our integration strategy for the Intelligent Enterprise. I expected a full room, to be very honest with you. <laughs> but I'm happy that uh, most of you took the time to come here. Now, if you look back um, into the keynote of what Bernd Leukert talked about yesterday, I think most of you would agree to the fact that uh, integration is at the core of everything what we do uh, with regards to the intelligent enterprise. And having a very solid integration strategy is also absolutely fundamental when it comes to success in delivering upon our promise uh, for the intelligent enterprise. Now, if you look at some of the quotations that, and the research that have come out from Gartner, um, what, what they claim is more than 50% uh, of the time on projects where customers spend to build out their digital platforms will be spent on integration um, projects, right? So quite some time being spent there over the next years. And given the fact that uh, we all need to very quickly change to requirements that's coming from the business and having the fact that you have to deal with very heterogeneous landscapes, hybrid landscapes, having a very solid integration strategy, or if you ask me to shake up your integration strategy a little bit, to have it a solid one as a core of your intelligent enterprise is absolutely fundamental when it comes to success in this journey. Now, this is what we did internally at SAP as well, and we defined the strategy for our integration portfolio, and this is what I'd like to uh, share with you. And when you look at our uh, focus topics for the intelligent enterprise, we primarily look into four main, main areas. First of all, we talk about out-of-the-box integration. This is absolutely fundamental to everything what we do. You've seen that in the keynote as well where we look at end-to-end -end processes. I'll name the few that we are looking into. And what we are doing is we are applying specific guidelines when it comes to integration and consistently applying this as we go along that process to make sure that you as a customer benefit from an out-of-the-box experience. Now, the second piece of the pillar is no matter how much of out of the box we are going to deliver to you, it's absolutely critical that whatever uh, an integration strategy you pick has to be open enough to allow you to extend, allow you to customize, allow you to very uh, quickly uh, uh, extend based on open APIs, based on open connectors. And this is why our second piece of our integration strategy is an open integration strategy, right? The third piece is holistic integration. Now, I think all of you would agree to me that when you talk about integration for an intelligent enterprise, you need to make sure that you bring together your people, your process, your data, your devices, and make sure that they all work in harmony with each other, and make sure that you're able to connect the dots, connect the pieces, connect the different personas that come into place, connect the different deployment options that you need to support in order to support the needs of your business. So a holistic integration strategy that caters for the different styles, patterns, personas, deployment options becomes absolutely critical. And that's the third piece of our integration strategy, having a very holistic offering when it comes to the different styles, patterns, personas, and deployment options. The fourth piece of our pillar, something that I'm truly excited about, is intelligence, which is infused into the context of integration. Why is this so important? Because we, as SAP, have a whole lot of learning over the last years in how integration has been done, how business semantics come into play when we talk about different contexts and how they traverse through that process. And now, with the ripened technologies with machine learning, we are able to derive from these patterns and derive also um, uh, ways in which we can determine how quickly we can use machine learning to further simplify your in integration, to further accelerate your integration. And this is why the fourth pillar of our integration strategy is machine learning infused integration or artificial intelligence where we bring these capabilities together. 
So let's take a um, bit of time and understand each of these pieces. I'd like to take concrete examples so that you see how each of these pieces come together in our product portfolio. First of all, with out-of-the-box integration. So what we're doing at SAP is looking into end-to-end -end processes like lead to cash, design to operate, source to pay, total workforce management. If you ask me, each of these are extremely complex processes that go across multiple lines of business. And what we're trying to do is, as part of our integration DNA, we make sure that we are consistently applying different patterns and styles and technologies behind the scenes for these processes to give you that out of the box integration experience that we um, target. When we talk about out of the box and guidelines for integration, this translates into a lot of things like master data objects, like if you take a lead to cash, we make sure that we use a consistently the customer as a master data object throughout that process so that you get a 360 degree view on that customer. Other aspects include consistent usage of identity and access management where you don't have to mul multiple times log on to the system as a user, but your identity is propagated as you travel through that process. Similarly, also making sure that technologies are consistently applied given that we have different patterns of integration that come into play so that you have a full kind of a nervous system that goes through your enterprise in a very consistent manner. And this is what we are doing when, when we talk about also having well-defined APIs that are used to, for integration and extension purposes. Now let's take a concrete example of how this comes together in the context of a unified user experience. So behind the scenes, if you are a persona who is one of the personas that comes into play for, say, a lead to cash process, who's looking at a, a, a profile of a customer that you'd like to engage with, you can imagine behind the scenes, the information needs to be gathered from multiple sources. Here again, what we're doing is we apply the same patterns of integration in a consistent manner to aggregate that information. How do we integrate machine learning patterns into that data to be able to derive those very specific insights that's relevant for that context of usage for that particular user, right? The second aspect is also master data. I talked about master data being offered on the cloud platform. We are building out these master data objects on the cloud platform. Good example is the business partner as a master data object. And behind the scenes, we are also supporting patterns like pops up patterns which allow for if a change to the master data object, then you know who are the subscribers for that. And patterns like supporting an event-based pops up are core guidelines that we define, which are consistently, again, used throughout that end-to-end -end process. So again, out-of-the-box integration, consistent guidelines being used. The second phase, when I talked about holistic integration or open integration, when I talk about open integration, we are absolutely passionate about the fact that we open up our APIs. Uh, yesterday, Bern talked about this as well, how many APIs have been made available on our API business hub. This is absolutely key when it comes to also following open specifications so that we, we are part of the open API specification. All the APIs that are made available on the API hub Follow these patterns, again, give you the chance to very quickly test out these APIs, sandbox systems available behind the scenes. And again, our business applications opening up thousands of APIs on the API hub, waiting to be explored. Partners can tap into it, build out applications, extension solutions, and bring it out um, on the app center. The second part of being open is also what we launched with the SAP Cloud Platform Open Connectors, because like I said, we acknowledge the fact that it's not always going to be an SAP application out there. You have any kind of value chains that you need to plug into, and hence, the, the, our openness promise is extended to the fact that we have a, a partnership which allows us to open up connectors to more than 150 third-party cloud applications as well as on-premise applications, and the promise and the beauty behind it is we offer you canonical data models within the API hub that allow you to plug into those canonicals and be able to connect into any kind of application that might uh, be out there. 
right? And so irrespective of changes that happen in these third-party applications, you as a consumer always have the canonical in between where you can be uh, assured that we make sure that canonical stays stable. The third piece of our pillar we talked about is holistic integration. I told you that we need to support multiple patterns, styles, bringing together the processes, the people, the, the data, the devices all together in, in harmony. And again, you have different personas that come into play when we talk about integration. And the holistic integration solution absolutely caters for all of this. And this is why we also launched the cloud platform integration suite that brings together the capabilities for the different personas, be it a business user who is working with workflow or a decision maker who needs to extend a rule or if you need to have a very specific pattern of integration for B2B or B2G or IoT integration or user-centric integration or analytics integration, these are all capabilities that are brought together in the cloud platform integration suite, really bringing together your people, process, data, devices, all in harmony. And again, if you're a customer who's using the cloud platform enterprise agreement, you have access to all these services. You can pick and choose those services that are relevant to your use case. And what we've also done is we have complemented this with a methodology, the integration solution advisor methodology. There's a great sessions on, the, uh, on this, which goes into how enterprise architects can benefit from the integration solution advisor methodology. Now, when we talk about integration, having a very solid data integration strategy becomes absolutely fundamental in terms of how can you make sure your nervous system is complemented with the right data that you have scattered across your organization. And this is why, as part of a holistic integration strategy, we've also brought together the HANA data management suite, combining the capabilities of HANA as well as the, 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 the data hub, and which gives you all the capabilities to manage and orchestrate your data sources irrespective of where they are, uh, where they reside. And what we've also done is we've enriched it with tons of operators that very quickly allow you to have data enrichment patterns, data quality patterns, data governance patterns mapped into the context of your end-to-end -end process and also applying machine learning algorithms to be able to derive insights from the data that you're orchestrating. So this also becomes a key piece of our integration portfolio. Now the fourth pillar that I talked about and where I said I'm absolutely passionate about is the machine learning based um, integration, right? Why is this so, so critical for us? Because we are totally committed to simplifying integration and at the same time accelerating integration. And how are we doing this? We uh, bring together the power of machine learning and crowdsourcing. We have brought together all the content in a common cloud-based repository where we are able to identify patterns based on specific context, based on specific business semantics, so that it allows for you to generate proposals like mapping proposals or interface guidelines. I mean, if you look at time spent in integration projects, which is what I started off with, I told you that tons of time, and this now significantly reduces the time that you spend in an integration project. Why? Because we've brought the brains of a business expert right into the context of the core of the uh, application, where based on patterns of how things have been built out in the past, you can very quickly generate these proposals and bring them closer to the runtime or the service that you're going to deploy these artifacts on. So that's the fourth pillar. Great examples of customers, again, different uh, entry points when, you, when it comes to how they have started off with an integration journey with us, different styles in terms of how customers are tapping into the API economy, uh, great examples of customers like Shell and uh, PostNL, again, customers who looked into how they can use the API economy to diversify their business models. Again, uh, good examples are also of customers who start with more B2B or B2G-centric patterns of integration, again, using the cloud platform integration suite, or also customers who look into classical application to application or data integration patterns where they start with the capabilities and then expand uh, from there. 
But again, if you look at all these cases, one thing is common. You have to get your integration strategy in place where you don't just look at a specific task, but look at the overall holistic view on what is it that you want to get to, how do you use this as the basis for everything that you do in making your enterprises intelligent because the whole nervous system is based on the information that's going through your uh, core integration platform as a service. Now, the adoption itself, absolutely mind-boggling if you ask me. I think uh, some of these numbers were also talked about uh, yesterday in the keynote. More than uh, 5,000 customers out of the 12,000 on the cloud platform are leveraging the core integration capabilities of the platform. And you can see the numbers of, uh, of the customers who are getting on the API hub and the number of customers on a daily basis, more than um, 13,000 customers accessing the API hub. And this, again, brings together the openness that customers benefit from by opening up our application APIs and making them available in a consistent manner on the API hub. So I'd like to summarize what we talked about today. And if you look at our overall integration strategy and how we use this as a basis for success in the intelligent enterprise, we mainly focus on four main pillars. First of all, out-of-the-box integration, where we strive for delivering out-of-the-box integration experience based on end-to-end -end processes where we consistently apply technology guidelines behind the scenes and I'll give you that experience when you navigate through multiple applications from SAP, you make uh, we make sure for you that it's a consistent and a very cohesive experience based on these guidelines. The second piece of what we talked about is um, open integration, again, boiling down to open APIs, open connectors, in a standardized manner on the API Hub. I uh, definitely recommend all of you to go into api.sap.com. You can browse through the APIs. You can look at the uh, connectors that we talked about to those 150 plus applications that we expose uh, via Canonicals on the API Hub. The third piece of the puzzle, make sure we're talking about a holistic integration strategy which means bringing together the different personas that kick into place when we talk about integration, the different patterns of integration, the different styles of integration, as well as the deployment options supporting uh, via our multi-cloud uh, support that we also um, uh, talked about for the cloud platform. And again, holistic integration, all covered with the cloud platform integration suite, as well as the HANA data management uh, suite. Fourth piece, our machine learning driven in, uh, integration. Again, making sure that we help accelerate and simplify integration based on the learnings, based on the crowdsourcing information that we have brought together on the cloud. What we also did is we, uh, to make sure that you uh, go away with some nuggets that you can use, I want to point you to the two CIO guides for integration that we've uh, made available. The first one is talking about an overall vision for integration from SAP. And the second one actually takes you through concrete customer journeys. So if you're a customer who is transitioning, say, from ECC to S4, and you're looking at what should be my integration strategy as I go to that, here the CIO guide for integration goes into these specific customer journeys and gives you concrete examples on, on what you should be doing. This complemented also with the integration solution advisor methodology that I mentioned is a great uh, combination that allows a lot of enterprise architects and key decision makers who decide the integration strategy within uh, enterprises. So with that, I'd like to thank you for staying on till the end. And um, I'd like to invite you to the room beside here. Uh, to, I'm sure you have tons of questions, so I'll be there in the room uh, beside and happy to take your questions. Otherwise, thanks a lot and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.